All right, now on the national front, obviously, you know the headlines, Republicans win control of the Senate, waive all those other things, increase the majority in the House, all real. But question is, locally, how did house races in our region go yesterday? Andrew, you were keeping tabs all last night with me while uh, he was gallivanting over in the Sheridan. It was at a party. Yeah, exactly. A party. Oh, yeah, a party. Yeah, yeah. Party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which, <laughs> had a better time than happily. Go ahead. Yeah. Which no, no real upsets to report in our region. The surprises might be the margins of victory in some cases. Let's go around the tri-state. In New Jersey, nothing changed. Every incumbent won, running won re-election, and there were no party changes in the district where incumbents retired. So if you're in Jersey and your old congressperson was a Democrat, they still are. Same if you're represented by a Republican. Two surprises in Connecticut, not in who won, but in how much they won by. In Fairfield's 4th District, Jim Hines won re-election, but in a squeaker. Hines winning by just 4,600 votes in a district most thought he'd cruised a victory in. While in the Connecticut 5th, the northwestern corner of the state, Elizabeth Esty won a second term by seven points. Esty represents Newtown. She was front and center in the failed federal push for greater gun control. In New York, a big loss for a veteran congressman used to winning close races like the one we thought he'd face yesterday. Tim Bishop's career representing Suffolk County in the first will come to an end. Lee Zeldin winning, going away in the end by 10 points. The other close congressional race in our region didn't go final until today. In the Hudson Valley, Sean Patrick Maloney narrowly fended off a challenge by former Congresswoman Nan Hayworth. One wonders if the narrow margin will prompt a third matchup of the two come 2016. To Staten Island, where voters sent Michael Grimm and his 20-count federal tax in charge indictment back to Congress. Grimm beating Re Dominic Recchia by 13. Other races, the margin was the story, not the result. Nassau County's 4th District, Kathleen Rice on a bad night for Democrats beat Bruce Blakeman by nearly 30 points to succeed the retiring Carolyn McCarthy. While one district over, Steve Israel, whose other job is to help elect Democrats to Congress, won by only 10 points. Back to the Valley, where Nita Lowy won another term, but in the smallest margin of victory for her since her first election back in 1988. And then there were the two blowouts where we did see it coming in the Valley's 19th district. Chris Gibson beat Sean Eldridge by 30 points, while Long Island Republican Peter King won his race by 38. Two final congressional notes from elsewhere in New York. In Rochester, veteran Congresswoman Louise Slaughter leads her race by just 582 votes out of 185,000 votes that were cast. For reference, President Obama won that same district two years ago with 59% of the vote. She's up by 582. Finally, meet Congresswoman-elect Elise Stefanak, elected last night to represent the 21st District. That's way up north near the Canadian and Vermont borders. Stefanak becomes the youngest woman ever elected to Congress. Rich, she is just 30 years old. Wow. And it will age her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> First off, Grim wins. Now, I know we knew it was going to happen. We saw the polls going and, uh, you know, Recky ran possibly one of the worst campaigns I've ever seen, earning marble mouth as a, as a thing. Mm -hmm. But, <clears throat> my gosh, I mean, we, you and I are the cynics here, okay? Let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's keep the poor chairman out of this. He's got some leverage um, with, uh, when he's looking at this 20-count indictment, doesn't he? Talk about how this usually works here. I would, they know this thing's going to go in December. If, the, if he's going to say, you want me to go quietly? No jail time, no nothing. I'm uh, a re-elected congressman. That counts for something when you're talking to the feds making a deal, right? Well, how this goes, uh, there are a couple of ways to look at this. Uh, one, he's up against a tough case. That is Michael Grimm, recently uh, re-elected uh, against the feds. And he's up against a tough U.S. attorney that's being considered for the attorney general's job. So the feds probably, probably got the goods on him. But after his re-election, he may decide to ride it out and see if he can win, or pre-trial motions, basically starting now, you try and cut a deal with the feds that basically says, Richard, as you well know, listen, I'll go away quietly, I'll take the, convention, the conviction, but no jail time. So that is what we are looking at. And remember, you still have Malcolm Smith, the uh, state senator, who's looking at the same situation. Although in Malcolm Smith's case, he is looking at the possibility of actually going to jail. Interesting how that plays out. You know, one thing, uh, Chairman, which w we went up and down the valley, talked to all the candidates, and Gibson very proudly said, I'm the most moderate Republican, if you look at my voting record and by uh, impartial observers when they rated it. And he made a point of that. He made a point of that in every interview that we did with him. He made a point of his campaign literature and everything else. Some people run away from that. He embraced it. Is that kind of especially if you're in a northeast state, good politics to say that you're moderate? 
Uh, look, it, it worked for him, and he is. Uh, we have a terrific delegation now of nine members of Congress, maybe 10 if we beat Louise Slaughter. And a lot of the Democrats have 18 or would have 17. That is really very important for the people in New York State, considering that we now have a record majority mm -hmm. in the House of Representatives. Of, it could be close to 250. Uh, before we wrap this segment, a little birdie told me that if um, it goes the way that many expect from Mr. Grimm, there's already names emerging if there were a special election, uh, including a very familiar name for Staten Island, Mr. Fasella. Are you hearing some of the same uh, things? Well, let me just say, you're getting way ahead of the game here in your cynicism. There, oh, there well, is a please. There is a political smell to this indictment and its timing and the personnel involved and what the subject matter is. It was not about what the initial investigation was about, his campaign finances. I do, I do so. remember that I'm every not sure Republican the outcome ran is away from him. Nobody was with him. And by the way, he had a campaign staff of him and probably one other person. No money. No Republican showed up. No endorsement. I mean, so I do find it interesting that all of a sudden now he's a lot prettier Incidentally, than he was you will three see, weeks we, ago. We did not run away from him. We put out flyers for him. We did, we did mailings about it. And he did a tremendous service for his constituents when he whipped together mm. the majority in the House to get Sandy And he can throw a reporter over Island. a balcony better than anybody. All right. Threatened to. Yeah, Threatened that, to. That, that, thank you. <laughs> Important clarification. All right. Coming up next here, we're going to switch our focus to ballot measures. Turned out it was a good night. Believe it or not, for raising the minimum wage, even if it was a bad night for the party that was actually pushing. Stay with us.